This one summer, authored by Mariko Tamaki and illustrated by her cousin, Jillian Tamaki, is a Canadian young adult graphic novel. Mariko Tamaki, known for her work in both Marvel and DC Comics, has penned several graphic novels. Originally released in 2014 by Groundwood Books, the story follows the summer escapades of two young girls on the brink of adolescence as they observe their parents navigating the complexities of adulthood. While the novel has faced criticism for its exploration of sexual themes, it has also garnered accolades, notably being the first graphic novel to receive the Caldecott honor in 2015. Set against the backdrop of Owego Beach in Ontario, Canada, the narrative unfolds as preteens Rose and Wendy realize the intricacies of growing up. Twelve-year-old Rose, accompanied by her parents Evan and Alice, embarks on a summer trip to the beach. Upon arrival, she promptly seeks out her friend Wendy, a spirited ten-year-old with a passion for music, living with her mother Evelyn in an unconventional, spiritually inclined household while her father is often away for work. She and Rose are summer friends who have known each other since they were young, and they talk to each other about everything. They go to the beach and catch up on their summer so far, and then head to the local store, Brewster's, for some candy. There, Rose and Wendy watch as the clerk, Duncan, flirts with and kisses a girl, Jenny, in front of them. Rose laughs it off, but Wendy seems uncomfortable in the situation, later calling Duncan, the dud. The next day, Rose thinks back on her younger days at Owego Beach as her mother, Alice, braids her hair. She remembers collecting rocks with her father and the time she and Wendy collected milkweeds to eat, assuming they were magical. Rose's mother found them in time and warned them of the plant's poisonous nature. Rose invites her mother to the beach, but she declines, so Rose meets Wendy there. They discuss the breast sizes of various girls and women they know, and Wendy admits that, because she is adopted, she is uncertain how big hers will be. She and Rose joke about breasts until a couple of adults pass by and scold them. When the pair heads to Brewster's for candy, they overhear Duncan's friend call two girls sluts. Rose repeats this word at her family's cottage, and her mother warns her not to speak about people that way. A series of splash pages and large, textless frames follow, depicting the next day's events and the time which they occurred. It is an ordinary day in which Rose reads, eats lunch, bikes, plays games with her father and Wendy, and examines the way her hand appears through a translucent leaf. Rose and Wendy's families eat dinner together, and when dusk falls, the girls decide to rent the Texas Chainsaw Massacre from Brewster's. They overhear some teenage girls talking about sperm and blowjobs, and the teens yell after Rose and Wendy, teasing them. During the movie, Wendy becomes terrified and distracts herself by asking Rose about oral sex. Wendy finds it disgusting, but Rose admits she would do it if she was in love. In an aside, Rose admits she learned about sex from school. She draws a birthday card for her mother as Wendy dances around the room. The girls play M.A.S.H a fortune-telling game that stand for mansion, apartment shed, house, and Rose thinks about what her life would be like if she married Duncan. They then run to the beach once more, and two pages of painted waves follow. Walking home, Rose and Wendy hear the teenagers doing something in the forest, but Wendy wants to go home rather than investigate. At home, Rose and her parents enjoy a cheerful dinner, but soon afterward, Rose's parents begin to argue about Alice's mood. It is slowly revealed that Alice attempted to have another child and could not, and the disappointment led to depression. Rose is sensitive about this topic, and acts defensively when Wendy mentions it casually, the former is approaching adolescence while the latter remains childish and spirited, and this begins to cause conflict between them. Rose develops a crush on Duncan and wants to impress him by watching more horror movies. Wendy decides to eavesdrop on the teenagers on Rose's behalf, while Rose goes back to the cottage to greet her maternal aunt and uncle. Rose's aunt Jody and uncle Daniel are, in her opinion, childish for their age. Rose overhears her aunt and mother discussing how Alice still feels depressed. The family goes to the beach, and there, Daniel drinks beer and pressures Alice into swimming. She refuses, but he tries to take her by the arm. Alice pushes Daniel and leaves the beach angry. Rose goes for a swim to escape the situation. Her aunt and uncle leave shortly after, and Wendy comes over to spend time with Rose. They watch Jaws, and Rose thinks about the time her mother nearly drowned and the fight her parents had the night before. After the movie, the girls walk in the woods and find a deer, which leads them to the teenager's spot. 
Rose examines the various discarded objects until Wendy asks to go to the beach instead. There, the girls go swimming and become enveloped by the water until evening comes. Rose swims back to her cottage alone, and there, her father tells her that he is leaving for a few days. At the cottage, Rose examines her family's ongoing rock collection and wonders if her family will ever be the same again. She goes to Brewster's to rent a DVD and overhears Duncan and his friend talking about how Duncan is too scared to call Jenny, his girlfriend, after finding out she is pregnant, which was hinted at by Wendy after she eavesdropped. Rose and Wendy watch Friday the 13th, and Rose hopes Jenny's baby is not Duncan's. For days after Evan's departure for the city, Rose, Wendy, and Wendy's family go to the local heritage center where Jenny works, she is harassed by two teenage boys for being pregnant. There, Rose becomes increasingly irritated by the atmosphere and cannot seem to stop thinking about her mother. At home, she confronts her mother, accusing her of being preoccupied with a baby she will never have and neglecting the child she does have. She tells her mother that she is always unhappy and wonders why she came to a Waco beach at all. Rose goes for a walk alone. At the beach the next day, Rose tells Wendy that she thinks Jenny is cheating on Duncan, as a boy who wasn't Duncan comforted Jenny after she was harassed at the Heritage Center, and that it is Jenny's fault that she is pregnant. Wendy thinks Rose is being sexist, which makes Rose angry, and she swims off on her own. She goes to Brewster's, where she overhears Duncan and his friend talking about Jenny. She decides to explore the area and finds an old junkyard behind the store. There, Duncan finds Rose and tells her the area is off-limits. Rose wants to tell Duncan what she thinks of Jenny, but she decides against it and runs away. Rose's father Evan returns, but there is still tension between him and Alice. The conflict deeply affects Rose, who has a difficult time at her and Wendy's family's bonfire. Before meeting at the fire, Rose and Wendy go to Brewster's to get marshmallows, and on their way out, Jenny and her friend arrive and start screaming at Duncan. Rose and Wendy leave in silence, not knowing how to feel or what to say. At the fire, Rose goes to wash her hands in the lake and hears some teenagers screaming for Jenny. She notices Jenny floating face up in the water and screams for her mother. Alice runs over and dives into the water without hesitation, pulling Jenny to safety. That night, Alice and Wendy's mother Evelyn wonder if Jenny was trying to end her life, and Alice admits that she had a miscarriage in the lake the summer before and never told Rose about it. The summer comes to an end, and Rose and Wendy spend one last day at the beach, digging a giant hole. They soon say their goodbyes, while lying atop Rose's family car. They take in the sights and smells of Awago Beach one last time, and think about the next summer, wondering if they will see each other again. Wendy insists that Rose has to come back so she can see how much her breasts have grown. On the drive home, Rose thinks about becoming a woman and looks forward to it, despite how difficult adulthood has proven itself to be. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.